All right, today we're talking about products and quotients. I mean, the derivative of a product. I'm talking about if you wanted to do, for some reason, something like this. If you had two functions multiplied together and trying to take the derivative of that. All right, we already talked about if they are added together, that's very easy. If they are added together, if the two functions are added together, last time we said the derivative of the two things added together is just you add the two derivatives together. This is very easy. For a product, you cannot do that though. It's not that. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you probably maybe feel like you wish it was that. It's not though. When they're added, you can do something simil simple like that. When they are multiplied, you cannot do that. In fact, there's a special rule you need to use, which is not this. It's called the product rule. It's a little more complicated than this. Can I just first mention, why would you ever want to do this? Like in the real world, remember, the derivative means how fast something is changing. There actually are many times when you would want to find how fast something is changing in terms of two things which are multiplied together. Um, I talk about like changing investments often. How about this? What if I have an investment in something? Uh, say a stock or something and its value is changing but what if um what if my stock say i have a like i own stock in uh amazon and the value goes up and down um the stock of course its value is officially listed in dollars what if i am using euros and i want to know the value uh using euros well you have to take the value in dollars and multiply it by the exchange rate but the exchange rate, my friends, is also changing. So in this case, you have the investment value times the exchange rate. Each of those things, both of them are changing over time. So if I want to know how fast my investment is changing in euro, then it involves figuring out how fast the product is changing, right? The actual value of the investment times the exchange rate, okay? And there are many other situations. This is just one simple example. Many other situations in which you want to know how fast something is changing, where that thing is actually a product of two other things, all right? Anyway, let's talk about this. There is a rule for finding the derivative of a product. Since we don't know the rule yet, really all we have to rely on is the definition of the derivative. Let's just try it out. This is gonna get a little nasty, but I think we can handle it. Um, we begin with the limit, and now remember the definition of the derivative, it said f of x plus h first. But this time, it's not just f. The function I'm taking the derivative is this, f of x times g of x. So up here, I'm going to see f of x plus h times g of x plus h. What I did was I took this thing and plugged in x plus h. And then you go minus, um, and then just the original function, which is f of x times g of x divided by h, all right? And now we have to try and simplify this somehow. What are you gonna do with this? Actually, there is no simple way to simplify that. You can't like distribute the f here because functions don't work that way. Uh, that works with multiplication, but not with just doing some function. So um, what can you do with that? You have to do a little trick, which you probably wouldn't think of on your own, and I wouldn't necessarily think of on my own, but it does work once you see this done. This is one of the old, I'm gonna add and subtract the same thing. So I'm gonna keep the first term as is. And then I'm going to subtract something that looks like f of x plus h g of x. And then I'm also gonna add the same thing, plus f of x plus h g of x. And then finally on the end we have minus, sorry I'm, I'm out of room here, f of x g of x, right? And then this whole thing is over h in the fraction. Okay, what can we do with that? Actually, this I'm going to separate out into two parts. There is one part, uh, these first two, they both have f of x plus h on them. And the second two, they both have g of x on them. So I'm going to make this into two fractions. The first fraction is made up of the first two parts and I'm gonna factor out f of x plus h. So it's like this. And then what remains uh, above is g of x plus h minus g of x over h. All right, so I took this first two terms, separate that out into its own fraction, and then factor out f of x plus h. And then I have plus the other one uh, involves these two terms, and uh, from them I'm going to factor out g of x. So g of x times, and then the fraction, what's left over, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. All right check it out. Now we can actually do the limit 
These things, what is that and that? They should look familiar. This is the definition of the derivative of g, isn't it? And this is the definition of the derivative of f. And so when I do this limit, this thing becomes the derivative of g. This thing becomes the derivative of f. This, uh, this is just g of x. There's no h in there. This, when I let h go to 0, just becomes f of x plus 0, which is f of x. So what we get here, when I do this limit, f of x plus h, the h is becoming 0. So this is f of x. And this thing in the circle is g prime of x. It is the derivative of g. And then plus g of x is like it is. This thing inside the circle is f prime of x. And there you have it. This is a fairly nice form. It's not so hard to remember. Let's, uh, let me just write this down as our sort of conclusion. All right, this is called the product rule. The product rule. It's called that because it tells you, it's a rule which tells you how to find the derivative of a product. It says the derivative of f of x times g of x is f of x g prime of x plus g of x f prime of x. All right, there's a nice little symmetry to it. If you think of this, um, you know, usually they're not going to be written as f's and g's. I think of this like, this is the first thing in the product, this is the second thing. And what I see over here is the first thing times the derivative of the second thing plus the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. This is kind of in my own head, this is how I remember the product rule. It's the first Right, when I remember the product rule in my head, this is, this is what I say to myself in my head. The first thing times the derivative of the second thing plus the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. Make sure you get these primes in the right spots, right? They are very important. Uh, f of x means just whatever the original function was, just as it was written. f prime of x means the derivative of that function. All right, this is the product rule. You absolutely need to memorize this. Like I said, I memorize it in terms of this little slogan here. It's probably uh, better than memorizing like what the formula looks like. Uh, let's just see how it looks in a few examples. All right, let's see if we can do this one. Find the derivative of this thing, 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 4x squared. All right, I see the times here. That means I'm going to use the product rule. Let me just remind you, you cannot just take the derivative of this part, which would be 2, and then the derivative of this part, which would be 3 minus 8x, and then just say that's the answer. That's not how it works. When you have a product, you must use the product rule, which is what I just wrote down before. It is. I can just say what the answer is. You don't have to uh, work too hard with these. It is the first thing times the derivative of the second thing plus the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. All right, the first thing is 2x plus 1 times the derivative of the second part. The second part is that. I take its derivative and I get 3 from this minus 8x. This better be in parentheses. Haters. All right, don't let those haters get their way. Um, so what I've done so far is the first thing times the derivative of the second thing. In terms of the way the product rule was written, this is f, this is g prime, right? And then I go plus, and what I want to see here is g followed by f prime. So g being the second part, just the way it is, 3x minus 4x squared times f prime would be the derivative of this part. The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of plus 1 is 0 because a constant becomes 0 when you take the derivative. So this is just times 2. And that is the derivative, my friends. This is your answer. Uh, like I said last time, you may have, you may feel some kind of um, compulsion to simplify this by like multiply that out and recombine it with this other stuff. I don't care about any of that. If I ever ask you to find the derivative of something, you should find the derivative. That is the derivative. Um, I didn't ask you to simplify anymore, so I would not expect you to try and simplify this anymore. This class is not about simplifying. This class is about doing calculus. So. If I ask you to take the derivative, you take the derivative, then you drop the mic and back away, all right? That's plenty fine enough. If you start trying to simplify this, you're likely to just mess it up. Or if, even if you don't mess it up, you just did a lot of pointless work. Okay, that is how we do the product rule. All right, this is kind of a big and nasty one, but really it doesn't matter. This is not uh, any, you know, substantially harder than the, the one we just did. So I'm going to use the product rule. Why? Because I have two things multiplied together. That's your signal that you're going to need to use the product rule. And what do we do? We do the first thing times the derivative of the second thing plus the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. Let's do it. The first thing, as is, is this. 
x to the 4 plus 3x cubed minus 7x squared plus 5x plus 1 times the derivative of the second part. You best put this in parentheses. 10x to the 9 minus uh, this. I multiply the 4 by 7. I get 28x to the 3 plus 3x becomes plus 3 and the uh, constant there goes away. All right, so this is the first part times the derivative of the second part. And then I go plus the second part times the derivative of the first part. So I read the second one as is x to the 10 minus 7x to the 4 plus 3x minus 2 times the derivative of this part. Just go down the list here and take the derivative each time. 4x cubed plus, this is going to be 9x squared. This is going to be minus 14x plus 5. And the constant goes away as always. That's your answer right there. Once again, you could, I suppose, try and simplify this. I do not recommend it. You would have to do a lot of multiplications and there's no point to that. I asked you to find the derivative. That's the derivative. Okay, all that was about products. What about quotients? I promised you we would talk about quotients also. Um, there is, you know, a product rule, which I just said. There is also a quotient rule. This one, um, I gave you some justification for why the product rule is true. Um, would you mind if I just tell you the quotient rule? You, you can demonstrate the quotient rule in a very similar way. You write the definition of the derivative, then you do some weird adding and subtracting the same thing. Uh, in a cute way and it all sort of separates out. It's a little more complicated than the product rule and I'd rather not uh, get into all those details. Can I just tell you what the quotient rule is? This is another rule for finding the derivative, but this time it's about the derivative of a quotient. So it would be like this, right? The derivative of a quotient. And here it is, I'm gonna tell you the rule. It is g of x, f prime of x minus f of x, g prime of x divided by g of x, the whole thing squared, all right? So this is uh, slightly more complicated, although it looks kind of similar on the top to the product rule, although it has a minus there, and they go in the, in a, in the other order. Um, uh, I, I have sort of an embarrassingly stupid way that I remember the quotient rule. If you think of this, this fraction here as um, high over ho derivative of, this, even, even in my mind, as I was writing this just a moment ago, I was thinking about this in my head. What I see here, derivative of high over ho is um, ho d high minus high d ho over ho ho. That's how I remember this, right? Um, where d means derivative. So this, this is a, the cute little way of remembering this. Um, when you're, uh, when you're doing the quotient rule in public, you can act like you just have the, the true formula memorized, even though in your head you're saying this stupid thing to yourself. Uh, this is how I remember the quotient rule. Anyway, however you want to remember it, this you must memorize this formula, the quotient rule. We're going to use it fairly often, although um, not every day, so you may have to actually put in some effort to remember that. Let's just try some quotient rule examples. Maybe I'll leave it right there for us. Let's try an example down here. How about the derivative of x squared plus 3 divided by 3x to the 4 minus 2x. All right. Now, again, I will caution you. You cannot just take the derivative across the top and also take the derivative across the bottom. You'll get the wrong answer if you do that. Why is that not correct? Well, because finding how fast a quotient is changing is, is more complicated than just the, the numerator and the denominator. You got to do this instead. Let's do it. It's not so hard to do, provided you can remember the uh, the formula for the quotient rule. What's it going to be? So the f is the top one, the g is the bottom one. So I see g of x times f prime of x. So I'm going to write the bottom one just like it is, 3x to the 4 minus 2x times f prime of x. It's the derivative of the top one. That would be 2x. All right. Then I go minus f of x is the top one, just like it is, x squared plus 3 times the derivative of g, which is the bottom one. So the derivative of the bottom one, 12x cubed minus two. All right, you got all those parentheses? I hope so. All of this divided by g of x squared. That's just the bottom thing. 3x to the four minus two x squared. All right, that's my answer. Again, don't try and simplify that. Save yourself 10 minutes of your life um, unless I tell you to, 
this this is a good enough example. Unless I tell you to simplify or if you have some reason to simplify it, just leave your answer like that. This is how we do the quotient rule. It's a rule. One more example, just because we got a few minutes of time here. How about... This is interesting because we have a quotient and a product, right? There's a product up there, but that product itself is part of a quotient, all right? So what am I gonna do? Like the product rule and the quotient rule, one, one after the other, or maybe both at the same time? The answer is, uh, yeah, you are gonna do the product rule and the quotient rule. Um, and it's kind of both at the same time. You have to ask yourself, principally when I look at this, is it is it like, mostly a quotient with a product inside of it, or is it a product with a quotient inside of it? And the answer is, this is a quotient with a product inside of it, right? The quotient, this this bar is sort of the, the biggest thing that's happening, is this fraction. And then as part of that fraction, I see a product. So what I'm going to do is the quotient rule. Let me just write down in words my strategy here. You do the quotient rule, I'll just write QR, but when we take the uh, derivative on top, it's a product rule, right? The top is itself a product. So when I'm doing the quotient rule, there's one part at which I have to take the derivative on top. And when that happens, I have to use the product rule to do the derivative on top. All right, let's see if we can do that. This is a little, uh, a little tricky, a little confusing maybe. No problem. Uh, so first of all, I do the quotient rule. It is the bottom times the derivative of the top. So immediately I see the bottom as is times the derivative of the top is gonna be a big thing here involving the product rule. I don't know how big. And then you go minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all of this divided by the bottom squared. But anyway, right in here, I'm gonna put the derivative of the top, which is a product rule. I go the first thing times the derivative of the second thing plus the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. I know this is a little confusing. Once you get the product rule and the quotient rule in your head, it's not so bad. Anyway, the first thing, x plus one, times derivative of the second thing is six x minus seven, and then plus the rest of the product rule, the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. The second thing is three x squared minus seven x times the derivative of the first part. Actually, that's just one, right? The derivative of x is one, and the plus one goes away, so times one. I just barely made it inside my uh, parentheses there, all right? Remember, this is only the first part of the numerator of the quotient rule, right? This is g times f prime, and then I go minus, I'll write it down here because I'm out of room. Um, this is the bottom times the derivative of the top, and then minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So the top, I'm copying as it is, 3x squared minus 7x, times the derivative on the bottom is two, all right? All of this is the numerator of a big fraction whose denominator is 2x plus 5 squared, the bottom squared, all right? This is the answer for the derivative of that thing. That's kind of complicated. You just got to keep it straight, all right? That'll do.